Now, verse number 5 is the verse found in this passage where theologians have discussed for centuries, decades, about the theological implications found here in verse 5. This verse, verse number 5, separates denominations within the umbrella of Christianity. There's three main interpretative views of verse number 5. I'm going to share with you each of them, and I'm going to share with you why two of them are wrong and why one of them is right. The first one is a lot of theologians are going to come to this verse, and they're going to say verse number 5, it, all it means is that we're washed by the water of the Word. And they'll reference 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 where it talks about being born again, not of corruptible seed, which is our father's seed, our earthly father's seed, but of incorruptible seed, that is our heavenly father's seed, um, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. And then some will go to Ephesians chapter 5 where it talks about being washed by the water of God's Word. Now I can understand how somebody might see that in this passage, but you got to keep in perspective that just moments before uh, Nicodemus says, how can a man be born again or born twice? Does he have to go back into his mother's belly and come out again? So that view just doesn't see and doesn't fit the, the passage of Scripture. So that's the first view. Now the second view, which we're going to spend more time in this view. I don't have a major problem with the one I just shared with you, although I don't believe it's true to the text. But this next one is a major, major, major heretical problem. And I'm going to share with you a story. A couple years ago, I was at Towers Mall. I was probably, can't remember the details of the situation, but I was probably either going out to eat with one of you fine folks uh, on a visitation or doing something there, and I, and I had some tracks, and I just decided that, that I'm going to pass out some tracks here at this area, so I went on some cars, probably 10 or 15 that were parked around mine, and I placed our gospel tracks on the cars, on the windshield of several of these cars, and some time goes by, and I received a letter in the mail here from an individual who said, I have received your pamphlet, I have read through your pamphlet, and everything within your pamphlet is wrong. That is God's simple plan of salvation. You can read it out there, take it and read it for yourself. Anyway, so I started reading it. I said, well, this guy's probably either a Jehovah Witness or a Mormon. So I, I began reading this, and he was not a Jehovah Witness, and he was not a Mormon. And he began to talk about this verse right here. And during this time, my first year of seminary, and I was in a theolo uh, theology class, and I had to write a paper. And I chose my subject to write on baptismal regeneration. That is a technical term that means you have to be baptized in order to get to heaven. So this individual was a part of the Church of Christ. Now, you, you listen, I am not here to badmouth anybody or to tear anybody down. But if there comes to an issue found in the Word of God that is clearly found not true, then we have to address the issue. Now, I'm not saying everybody in the Church of Christ denomination believes in baptismal regeneration, but I am saying that in their articles of faith, you can go online and read it for yourself, they literally believe that in order for you to get to heaven, you have to be baptized. You have to be dunked in the pond or in the pool of water in order to get to heaven. So I read the letter and I contacted the man. I said, wow, this is, this is great. I'm writing a paper in my theology class in seminary. I need some primary sources for this paper. So I called up the guy and I said, listen, man, I'd like to meet with you and discuss about this, this letter that you read to me. And what I would like for you to bring is maybe some resources that I could use to study. So he met me in the office down there in the fellowship hall. And I said right off the bat, I said, listen, sir, the purpose of me meeting with you is not for me to try to persuade you to what I believe. I know that you're settled in your belief. And I am settled in my belief. All I want is to hear your arguments. So there I sat in my office and, and I heard uh, the arguments of this idea of baptismal regeneration. I received books, I received articles, all these different things. And it was very helpful for me because there were some verses that I did not realize were found in the Bible that they used to support their idea of being baptized in order to get to heaven. One is found in Mark chapter 16 during the Great Commission passage where the Bible says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And so the guy shared with me that, hey, according to this verse right here, this means that, that you got to be baptized in order to get saved. Well, the issue is they don't finish the entire verse. 
And there's a few questions. Is that talking about water baptism or is it talking about a spiritual baptism? But then the verse goes on to say, He that believeth not shall be damned. So the context of the passage literally implies that, hey, one who does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be damned for all eternity. Nothing about water baptism. And then there's a verse, and 1 Peter they're going to go to, talk about how, uh, or 2 Peter 1 of the two, and it discusses about how uh, baptism is a like figure, speaking of the context of the water and Noah, and all that is doing is it is an analogy, saying that just as water saved those people then... Now, God saves us by His grace now. And just use water baptism as an analogy. Nowhere, no way, shape, or form does it discuss salvation by water baptism. But then he brought up this verse right here. And this verse right here, the second interpretation says that when, it, when the Bible reads, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's the issue over born of water. So they say that because this is born of water, it means water baptism. Well, this is dead wrong. And this, my dear friends, is heresy. And I say that honestly, I say that respectfully, and I say that boldly and firmly. Keep in mind the context of the passage. All right? So, previously, uh, he says, Except a man be born again, born of above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus says, How can a man be born when he is old? So, implying another birth. He says, Does he have to go back into his mother's belly or womb and come out again? Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Now, let me give you the third interpretation, which is the right interpretation of this passage. Born of water means physical birth. And of the Spirit means spiritual birth. You, many of you ladies have had children before, and you understand that your water breaks. Water comes out. And then you know that you need to get to the hospital. Uh, because the baby is on its way. But this implies a physical and a spiritual birth. You say, I'm just not convinced. I, I still don't see that. Well, I'm glad you said that, because verse 6 goes on to, him, to, to give the reasoning. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Speaking of a physical birth. And then it says, And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. A spiritual birth. So this passage does not teach water baptism. It does not teach that, that necessarily we're going to be washed by the water of the Word, even though we are. But this passage teaches us that, hey, if you're born once, you'll die twice. But if you're born twice, you'll die once. Now, 